So I'm incredibly excited because the 2025 planners have arrived and they are better than ever. We've packed these planners with everything you need to plan your business, get organised, stay productive and most importantly achieve your goals. If you're already using my PA, I've included timestamps in the description below so feel free to skip ahead to the parts you're most interested in. But if you're new here, stick around and I'll take you through all the key features that make my PA a game changer, not only for your productivity but for your business and your life. So quick intro, I'm Alex, founder of MyPA. I created MyPA back in 2015 for myself. I was juggling a huge number of personal and business commitments at the time, and I couldn't find a planner that truly met all my time management and productivity needs. I felt overwhelmed, scattered, and needed a tool that would help me take control of my schedule and get organised. I wanted something with a place for everything, so I wouldn't have to keep multiple notebooks for my ideas, goals, and tasks. And that's why I called it MyPA my personal assistant. It took a while to refine, but I eventually came up with a system that was both simple and highly effective at keeping me organised and focused. It helped me manage my time in a way that felt natural and manageable without adding extra stress. What's even more exciting is that although I didn't realise it at the time, this planner follows Harvard's number one productivity hack, time boxing. This, along with other effective time management principles built into the planner, makes it an incredibly powerful tool for staying on top of your goals and getting more done. After realising what a game changer it was in my own life, I knew I wasn't alone. I was part of a large Facebook group at the time of entrepreneurs and many of them were facing the same challenges, juggling multiple passions and commitments while struggling to get everything done. That's when I realised this system could help others. And in 2018, with a passionate and supportive community behind me, I launched the planner on Kickstarter. And the rest is history. And since then, thousands of entrepreneurs worldwide are using my PA planner to plan their businesses, stay organised and manage their time effectively. My PA has been featured as a top business planner by The Independent, Marie Claire, CNBC Make It. And last year, we were even added to Wired's list of favourite planners for business owners. An incredible recognition. So now let's dive in and take a closer look at the 2025 business planner and what it has to offer. So just before we go any further, I just wanted to show you what devices and formats the planner comes in. So it obviously comes in the paper planner. We also have it available in digital format and it can be used on your iPad or your Android device. And then also it can be used on your phone and you can sync your, your planner between your devices using GoodNotes or Note Shelf or Notability. Um, and then also it's available for your laptop as well through GoodNotes or through Microsoft OneNote. So here we are, the 2025 planner. Last year, we introduced these seven new beautiful colours in addition to our signature black to celebrate the diversity of entrepreneurship. So Giving now you there's more a ways to personalise your planner and make it um, truly your own. Whether you're drawn to something bold or well, prefer so a more classic look, there's a colour that reflects your style and ambition. So we've got Triumph in Turquoise, Navigation in Navy. Our new edition this year is Goals in Green. We've got Timely in tan we've got motivation in mango power in pink and brilliance in blush so the plan is the perfect size it's seven by nine inches or 18 by 24 centimeters between a4 and a5 size we found that a5 was just too small for writing comfortably and fitting everything in and the a4 was just too large and cumbersome the size strikes the perfect balance the cover is made from vegan leather and is flexi bound so it gives a really friendly feel with rounded edges and it's easy to clean and doesn't show fingerprints making it durable for you know for daily use um, when one of the best parts is um, there's no annoying spiral getting in the way to sort of get in the way of your handwriting and binding is strong and durable and it lies completely flat no matter where you open your planner maybe making it really super easy to to use and and write beautifully plus the 120 gsm paper is high quality that so there's no bleed through from from your pens unlike many productivity planners on the market that are quarterly the my pa planner um is the entire year and dated so you have everything um in one place for 12 months it also has an elastic band here to keep everything together and it also has two ribbon markers here so you can 
easily, you know, find your place wherever you wherever you are. So let's now walk through the planner. I'm going to take you through everything that the planner has to offer and how to use the system. So at the beginning, there's a place here to put your name and address just in case you should lose your planner. There's an introduction here from myself, which explains how it all started, which I've already gone through with you. So we always start with this beautiful quote, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe. I absolutely love that. We then go through an explanation of what my PA can actually do for you, achieving your goals, managing your time, being more productive, organised, inspired, keeping everything in one place, balancing your work and life. It just tells you exactly what the planner is it can do for you here. And then there's a description here about the actual system and how you use the system. Then the first thing we do is go into the 20 the previous year review so this would be the 2024 review so it just looks at how things went last year so that you can see what went wrong what went right and then perhaps make improvements you know and, and highlight what areas where you can improve for next year this is really great I think it really helps you home in and 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 and, and improve you know improve the next year then we've got 2025 targets this is a list of th 50 things you want to achieve in the next 10 years it says here if you don't know your destination how do you expect to get there so this is great because it keeps you really focused on what you actually want out of your life and we can also when we get sort of tied up in day-to-day -day, humdrum day-to-day -day activities we can forget about you know what's going to make our life actually beautiful so write the things that you really want out of life. It could be buying a house. It could be traveling the world. It could be starting a business. It could be starting a family. Anything that you want to achieve, however big and small, write it here. And it, it, it opens up such an area of excitement and exploration. It's actually really good fun. And then we get into your life. How are you going to plan to live your life this year? Again, it's so important to, to really reflect on what you want out of your life, what hours you want to work, what you want to do in your spare time. So it takes you through so you can pinpoint and focus on these areas. What do you love to do? What are you good at? List your areas of expertise. Which tasks do you dislike? What days do you want to work? What hours will you work? How will you spend your evenings and spare time? How will you spend your weekends? What holidays you'd like to take? Where are you going to work from? All these questions are so important in designing the life that you want. So then we get into your 2025 bucket list. This is all the things that you want to achieve this year and do this year. It could be, I don't know, you want to do a bungee jump. I've no idea why you want to do that, but you may want to do that. You may want to go to some new countries. You may want to purchase certain items, new items for the home. So everything that you want to achieve and buy or do this year, put it in your 2025 bucket list. Then we come to the 2025 business plan. Now, this isn't just for new business. I believe that every business should have a business, a new business plan every year. Every year, the, you know, the business changes, it evolves, there are new opportunities available. And I just think that every business at the beginning of the year needs to freshen up their approach and their ideas and look at what, what's working and what isn't. And also, they've you've learned so much from previous years, you can add so much more and improve the business so much more. So I do believe that every business should fill in and complete a, a yearly business plan. So the next se section is what is your why? Knowing your purpose makes you feel more alive and when you know your why it becomes easier to live a life that's true to your core values. Well being an entrepreneur or starting a business is, is quite challenging and there are days that you're going to wonder why you started and this is why it's so important to know what your why is so when you do have those times you can come back and you know you reflect on why you're doing this and how important it is for you to continue. So in order to keep motivated and achieve your goals it's important to understand your why the reason behind why you're doing what you're doing. This is where the two is, and this is so that this is a framework comes into play. It's a simple but powerful way to clarify your intentions and keep you focused on your true purpose. By using this structure, you state what you want to do here and then clarify the reason or the result you're aiming for so that it helps connect your actions with a deeper meaning, making it easier to stay motivated and committed.
Here are a few examples of what that could be. It could be to create a daily routine so that you can manage your time um, better and reduce stress. It could be to grow your business so that you could achieve financial independence and have more freedom. You may want to prioritise self-care so that you can be more balanced and energised in your work and personal life. And you want, may want to set boundaries around time so that you can focus on the tasks that matter most and avoid burnout. There are so many different whys and you've got loads of space to write them all here. And it's so great that when you do face those more challenging times, you can just come back and, and reflect on, on those, those reasons. We then get into your vision and there's space here for your vision to write it down for this year and in five years and also to, to make a visual representation here if you want to draw. So the next section is about your big mission and goals. So while your vision is the destination, your big mission is the overarching purpose or impact you want to achieve. It's the driving force behind everything you do. And this section helps you clarify why your work matters and how it aligns with your larger purpose. And then there's a section here for goals and your goals break down your mission into actionable steps. To make your goals even more effective, use the SMART framework, goals that are specific specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. This ensures your goals are clear and actionable, helping you to stay on track and see the progress. So here, for example, your mission could be to empower small business owners to build sustainable, profitable businesses that make a positive impact in their communities. And one of your SMART goals, an example, could be, for instance, to increase revenue by 20% this year by launching a new product line and growing social media engagement by 50%. But combining a clear vision with smart goals, you're going to stay focused on what truly matters most and really have a practical roadmap to achieve your long term vision. So this is where we get into the exciting bit about building your brand and your business. And it takes you literally from concept to launch. So start here with your business name, gives you advice on how, you know, what sort of how to choose your business name, your domain name, what the legal structure of your business is asking you to describe your product and service, what problems it's solving, what prompts your customers to buy your product, why did you originally start your business. So we're really delving deep into the product. So you're going to have a really good idea of what it is, how it's going to serve your customers, the problem it's going to solve, and we go into core beliefs, how you're going to produce it, what equipment do you need, any contingency plans if things fail, are there any regulatory insurance or legal requirements, what products or services are you thinking of uh, introducing in the future, who your suppliers are going to be, or your standard operating systems, how you're going to handle your shipping, how you're going to distribute your products, who you're going to employ, what training, will you use freelancers or outsourcers, outsource the scalability of your business this is all about sustainability and whether you have an exit strategy and then we get into a cost involved in producing your product and then how to how to price your product then going into how to calculate the sales you need to make the amount of money you want to make and also how to work out what your break even and your gross profit margin is then you go into sort of um, more about the brand what sort of um, words describe your brand and then a really important section here about your competition. Obviously, it's really important to know what your competition are doing, how they're pricing themselves, how they're marketing themselves. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? This is so you can find your unique place in the market and you can differentiate yourself in the market. Then we come into something which I find is really, really important, which is your SWOT analysis, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So you can list all these strengths. This could be anything to do with your knowledge, your skills. Weaknesses could be costs of capitals, capital. It could be inflation. Opportunities could be, you know, business trends, free publicity. All the opportunities you have now with AI helping you, you know, to run your business. And also, you know, threats, increasing co competition, inflation, things like that. These are all going to affect your, your, your business either, in either a positive or negative way. And knowing these things is, is really going to be, uh, really going to help you mitigate from, you know, any losses and also seize um, opportunities. And also here a section on how you're going to overcome those weaknesses and threats, um, how you can make the most of them, 
your strengths and then going on to how can you can measure the success of your business. You know, what key performance indicators will you use to measure the success of your, your business? Things like revenue, customer lifetime value. It goes into quite a lot of detail here. And then there's a section here for extra notes. And then we get into the marketing plan. So this is all about defining your target audience. So there's, it's a really big world out there. Targeting everyone is not your solution. You need to find exactly who you need to target. And here you have the space to really build a great customer persona here. What they do day to day, who they are, what sort of stage of the life cycle they're in. What are their hopes and aspirations? How do they have fun? What are they passionate about? This will really get to know, you know, you get to know how your customer will tick, how you'll be able to refine them, and then how you'll be able to craft your marketing message and your unique value proposition so you can actually sell your products or services. And then it goes here into how you're going to communicate with your customers about, you know, how you can produce your website or does it need improving? You know, a method here, you know, it all goes and details about how you're going to collect your emails and then hear about the sales funnel how you're going to find your customers and then actually get them down into the funnel to actually buying from you so this section is all about your email marketing how you're going to build your email list and then we come on to webinars advertising and then your social media marketing plan here and you can also see what your competitors are doing here on social and then work out what you're actually going to do, you know, on, on your social media platforms. And then we've got section here about um, content marketing, blogging, video marketing, podcasting, and then your PR plan, because getting free press is, is, is just so important these days, especially with the cost of advertising. So if you can get your business in, you know, a publication like we've done with The Independent, you know, um, Marie Claire, Wired, all these other things, it's, it's invaluable to get that kind of social proof. And then we come into your project planner here. So this is where you put every single project that you're going to have to do to achieve those goals that you listed earlier on in the planner. So you can put them all here and then you can prioritise them afterwards in what number, in what order they need to be done. There's a space here about 25, 25 connections. So these are sort of people that maybe you want to connect with in 2020, 25. And then here is a list of all the t weekly, monthly and daily tasks that you need to do on a regular basis. And you can put those all here. There's a section here about financial planning. There's a personal survival budget. How much you do actually need to, you know, to survive on, to, to live and to run your business. And then here's your 2025 profit and loss forecast and your balance sheet forecast. And then we get into the planner. So every month here of the planner, we have a monthly grid here. So at the beginning of the month, you can put any appointments, birthdays, whatever you've got, you know, planned for all your months. And then every month is where we have a positive habit tracker. So you can write your habit here and then tick off, you know, as you go. So it could be taking your vitamins every day, taking five minutes to plan the day, reading, you know, 10 pages of your book. This is great to keep you, keep you on track. Then at the beginning of every month, we have um, a main focus and a space for five, five goals here. So these again need to be smart. They need to be measurable, specific. Once you've, once you've listed your goals here, you can write all your monthly projects here that you need to achieve these goals here. And then you can prioritise each task here, write approximately how long it's going to take and who's going to do it. Are you going to do it? Are you going to delegate it to somebody else? Are you going to outsource it or are you going to automate it? So everything is written here. So that's the plan for your month. There's a social media marketing plan here. So you just put in what the content is going to be. Is it going to be a blog post, a video, an image post, a webinar? And then here you just write the initial of the social media platform that you're going to, you know, post it on. And there's enough space to do something for every day of the month. So this is every single month. And then we get into the weekly spread. Now, this is what took me such a long time to design because what I wanted was somewhere where you could fit everything so you wouldn't have to sort of go finding things in your planner. So there's a space here for all the things that you need to do on a regular basis, on a, on a weekly basis. So this could be writing a blog post. It could be checking your finances. It could be planning for the week. So you write all those, those things here and then all the specific goals and projects that you need to do that you wrote down here in your 
project planner. So you transfer whatever was in your project planner to your weekly, weekly goals there. Then you can, on a daily basis, you can write the three main goals that you're going to achieve that day. And then you literally schedule when you're going to do those things. Then there's a space up here, loads of space up here for writing notes, telephone numbers, what you need to buy, shopping lists, etc. And then down at the bottom here, there's a space to track your water intake, if that's what you want to do. Obviously, it's important to keep your fluids up when you're working. There's space there for, you know, how, you know, if you've done any meditation or exercise. Again, it all keeps you um, on track with, you know, trying to keep to maintain balance in your life with work and, you know, work and exercise and keeping healthy. And then at the end of every week, there's a weekly review. So it's like, how many sales did you make? How many email subscribers? Your achievements, what worked, what didn't, what goals didn't you achieve? And what you need to do to achieve these goals next time. And then there's a, a small space here for gratitude here. And then loads of space at the end of the week for doodling, scribbling, mind mapping, and any ideas um, that you want to want to keep or remember here. And then we go into the next week. And so every single month has, a, sorry, every single week has a weekly um, review and reflection and an idea and inspiration vault. And then, then at the end of the month, there's a space for your profit and loss statement and your January or your monthly cash flow there. And then at the end of the planner, let's just go to the end here. So when you get to the end of the year, you can review your year. There's more space for projects here. A 2026 calendar. There's a page for ideas. We, as entrepreneurs, we get flooded with ideas all the time. So we can't do them all. So there's a space here to keep back, keep those plans. And um, it says when a good idea comes, don't force it into your plans. Put it here. If it keeps nagging you after six months or a year, give it attention. Give it the attention it deserves. And then there's space here for your 2026 goals and your 2026 appointments and there's some graph paper and notes here space for notes lots of space for notes at the back and also a place for contacts and there we have it my pa planner you can purchase the planner on our website or if you want to give the planner a try for free then you can download the free planner 